Okay, this is the uh, lesson on how to perform a one sample t test. Uh, in this data set, we seem to have five columns, one with a participant ID. We have 18 participants, and they've apparently taken some survey measuring social anxiety, rejection sensitivity, depressive symptoms, and disgust sensitivity. Now, we use a one sample t test in a very specific situation. It's when we want to compare sample data to a population, but specifically, we, it's used when we don't know the population variance. If we did know the population variance, we would use a z-test. Uh, when we don't know the population variance and we only have the sample variance available to us, uh, that's when we use a one-sample t-test. So let's say we find that in the population, uh, depressive symptoms tend to be on a scale of 1 to 7. The average of depressive symptoms tends to be, let's say, a 1.5. And the question is, are our group of 18 individuals, from whatever population we've taken them from, are they different from the normal population, which has uh, an average of, uh, a population average of 1.5? So to do this, all we're going to do is we're going to go up to Analyze, Compare means, and we're going to go to one sample t-test, and we'll click on one sample t-test. This will bring up a window. On the left window, just as always, we're going to have all of our different variables. We're going to have a test variable in here and a test value here. We're going to move amount of depressive symptoms over to test variables, because what we're essentially interested in doing is comparing this average, the average of these participants' um, amount of depressive symptoms, to a certain value. The value that we're going to put in is whatever population mean we are interested in comparing it to. In this case, we want to compare our popu or excuse me, we want to compare our sample average to the population mean of 1.5. All we're going to do then is hit OK. We're going to get two boxes that appear. The first is our one sample statistics. This is the dependent variable, the amount of depressive symptoms. The n is the number of people who have participated in this study, the number of participants that are in this analysis. It has the mean of the sample for depressive symptoms as well as the standard deviation standard error. That's the one sample statistics. If we go down to the one sample t-test box, we're going to get another t-test table. We're going to have amount of depressive symptoms in the left-hand corner that lets us know what analysis we're doing. And then the first three boxes are going to be the information we need the most. It's going to be our t-observed, in this case 3.5. 108, our degrees of freedom, which is 17, and our significance value, 0 0.006, that is the same as a p-value. If our significance value is smaller than our alpha, which is 0 0.05, we would state that we would reject the null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis is that our sample is exactly like the population, we would have to conclude that our sample is not like the population. If we look at the mean, it would appear that our sample has more depressive symptoms than does the population. In order to write the t-statistic out properly, we would write t, parentheses 17, which is our degrees of freedom, equals 3.108, comma, p equals 0 0.006. We could run the same analysis again, this time, let's pretend that our test value, we found out that the level of uh, depressive symptoms in the population is actually 2.2. We could hit OK. We're going to see now that the mean for the sample stay the same, but all of a sudden, our significance value has changed rather dramatically, because now 2.2 is much closer to 2.33. In fact, it's only a difference of 1.33 and therefore it is no longer significant. We would say that our sample is just like the population. This is how you conduct a one-sample t-test.